So you've been a reseller now for the last couple of months and you've got aspirations to become a full-time reseller down the line. I thought it'd be really interesting in this video today to break down what would be the take-home paycheck if you were to bring in $10,000 a month in sales. And it's gonna be my case study that we have a look at today because 14 months into the game, I finally achieved $10,000 in monthly sales. So we're gonna have a look at that a little bit later in the video, but I do wanna jump into the weekend sales. And if we have a look at the numbers, I was able to bring in 15 sales over the weekend, total revenue of $700. And four dollars. When you take out the fees, the postage, and the cost of goods, you'll see there that I'm paying three hundred and seventy-five dollars in profit over the weekend. So a little bit less than normal, but I've still got some really great items that have sold that can hopefully help you out there with your own reselling business. So let's dive into the first category: the DVDs. So we had four DVDs and a video game sell over the weekend, and a couple of these here are consignments that I'm doing now. I've put no money down to get my hands on these and I've taken a 35% cut in the profit. So consignment's a really good way to go about it. ACDC Live at Donington, it's a Blu-ray copy here at $27.50 for that one. I've also got another music DVD here, Split Ends. Let me know in the comments if you're a fan of the band Split Ends. They sold for $28.95. Uh, V8 Supercars Race Driver, I picked this up in a trip to the thrift on Thursday. Just paid the two bucks and it's gone on sale for $29.99. Have also sold V8 Supercars 3 that I bought that day as well. So that's a real bolo PC game to be looking out for. And then this one as well. Who would have thought? Death Race 2000. $44.50 for this one. We've got an old Sylvester Stallone DVD here. So definitely one to add to the bolo list, guys. That was an absolute beauty. And then uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox. There he is there. So George Clooney, only a $10 sale, but still another one out the door. So not too bad there, guys. I've definitely slowed up in my DVD sales, but still, to get five over the weekend, not too bad. Now, guys, I show you a lot of sporting gear on these videos, but trust me, it's the only thing that seems to sell when it comes to clothing for me. So I've got another couple for you in this video. The first one is a Toronto Raptors long sleeve training top. Now, genuine merchandise. We've got the Adidas branding there, the ultimate tee. I bought this in a garage sale for a dollar. Just a dollar for this thing. And as soon as I saw the Toronto Raptors NBA, I had to buy it. So quick turnaround on this one, guys. A $27.50 sale price. I've made myself a good $15 profit off the purchase price being just a dollar. That's the trick. You bought this in an op shop for eight bucks. You probably don't make enough profit. You find it at a garage sale for a dollar. It becomes a worthwhile exercise. So sporting gear, NBA, Toronto Raptors. Thanks very much. And if we stick with the theme of US-based sporting merchandise, I've got this one here as well. We've got the NFL jersey here, the Washington Redskins, Daryl Green, number 28. Just a ripping find in a flea market, guys. I paid $10 for this thing, and I've been able to go on to sell it for 90 bucks on eBay. So a pretty quick sell-through rate. I think it was a little over four to five weeks, something like that, to get this one out the door. So not too bad. Um, a really nice jersey, and I did hold out for top dollar on this one. Wanted to get about 100 bucks. Got a lot of offers for about 50 or 60, kept saying no, and then got a turnaround for 90. So definitely hold out for your top price if you know what you have your hands on. I was very happy to get this one done. Now, it wouldn't be a What's Old episode without my problem with the plush continuing. We've got the uh, Sailor Moon uh, plush toy here. Now, anything Sailor Moon is a very worthwhile purchase. And I'm not talking just in the plush toys. I'm talking in absolutely anything. DVDs, books, whatever the case may be. This one has sold for $29.99, and I bought this in an op shop for $2. So, problem with the plush? Maybe not so much of a problem with this one. Now, I'm no expert selling dolls, but uh, we have had a good win here with Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen. I bought this in a flea market for $10. They really caught my eye, and I was able to get some pretty good comps on eBay. So, we got a sale price of $50 for these guys, and we had a $20 international postage on top of that for uh, the USA. These ones are off to New York. So who would have thought $10 in a flea market for a couple of plastic dolls and they've gone on to make $70 worth of a sale price. So I've made myself a good $35 profit when you take everything out. And uh, look, I can't say I'm going to continue to look for these, but every now and again, if they do catch my eye and they comp up well, I'll always grab them. Now, those Mary-Kate and Ashley dolls weren't the only international sale that we had. We also had these sell over the weekend. Two pairs of shoes sold. These Ultra Boost Oreo colorway laceless versions have gone on to sell. US 7.5, these ones. Condition of them, very, very good. Nothing wrong with them. We got a $50 sale price on these shoes, plus a $20 international postage rate as well. So 70 bucks worth of revenue for these guys. Love picking up my shoes. You guys know that. And this is definitely the reason as to why. 
And then the other ones that I had sell were the Asics GT 1000s. These are a very old pair of shoes. You can kind of just tell that they're a little bit older, but there's still plenty of wear left in them. The soles are really good. Um, these are a US size seven and they went on to sell for 45 bucks. So look, I didn't think that was too bad. I listed them up for 50. I'm always happy to take a best offer at 45. Um, so to get these out the door, not too bad. I would have only paid maybe five to $10. Can't exactly remember cost of good, but um, yeah, I'm making probably about a $25 profit on these after taking out our fees and postage. So only two pairs of shoes. I've got a whole heap of shoes right here. So hopefully we can get a few more sell throughout the week. If we have a look at the pants and the shorts category now, um, we had two. We had these ones here. I bought these on Thursday on a trip to the thrift. So the turnaround is only about two or three days on eBay for these guys. Really good size with these. We've got the extra large uh, dry fit. Now they are actually the Socceroos. You'll see here, we've got the Australia Socceroo pants. So these are a really nice pair. I think I paid six bucks on Thursday for these. Uh, I got a $37 sale price. So $31 after uh, cost of good, take out some postage, 25, and then you take out some fees, maybe about 20 bucks worth of a profit on those in the space of just a couple of days. Awesome stuff there. Now these guys here, I would probably not be picking up with my level of reselling experience uh, today, but uh, we had these bought about a year ago. A size 30 waist, they are definitely a little bit worn. So um, look, there's nothing wrong with them, no tears, but I just probably wouldn't buy this sort of thing uh, nowadays, but um, got a $22.50 sale price on this one. Bought it for about five bucks in the op shop. So I've probably made myself about a $7 profit. Now, for those playing at home, a few months back, you may have remembered that I bought some shoes from the brand Ultra. He was a guy that used to sell all these shoes at all the different running events, but uh, he was now out of the game and I was more than happy to pick up his shoes considering they were in brand new condition and I was getting them at $15 a piece. Well, already I've sold half of those Ultra running shoes and I've made myself $500 in clean profit. When you take everything out of it, that is currently the scenario. I've basically doubled my money. These were another sale that came out of it. They're actually a pair of socks. Uh, the brand is Stegan. I've got 10 pairs of these socks thrown in and I've already sold four of them. I'm getting an $18.95 sale price on these guys. So pretty good when you sell all 10, that's gonna be about $190 worth of revenue. Not too bad for something that was just thrown in. Um, but I think once I sell the remaining shoes that I've got in my bundle, I'm gonna end up uh, getting a return of about a $2,000 profit. So considering there was such a horrendous uh, jumper purchase worth of a wholesale grab a few months back to dip my toes back in the water in the wholesale game and buy some ultra running shoes, very, very happy to see some good returns with that lot. I was looking around for the next item that sold and it's actually sitting on my lid. Um, the, <laughs> this one here, the, the Buffalo Sabres, the NHL snapback hat. Awesome hat, this one, and I'm absolutely shattered. I've got a sale price of 25 bucks. So look guys, I really do think that this hat is so nice. I probably should have kept it for myself if I was gonna sell it for 25. The person that has bought it has got an absolute steal and uh, I really haven't made too much money. I bought it for a dollar though in the uh, in a local garage sale with the Toronto Raptors top actually, funnily enough. Cleaned out his US sporting merchandise. But guys, really, a hat like this, I know I bought it for a dollar. I know that I'm making about a $15 profit, but should have sold for about 40, 45. Just had a very long sell through rate, couldn't get it done. Maybe the Buffalo Sabres aren't too well known over here in Australia. Um, but look, nonetheless, 15 bucks, I guess I can't complain, but I probably should have kept it as a personal. Now, we all love the thrill of finding items in an op shop or the flea market, garage sales, wherever you're getting your items from, but it's a really important element to really know the numbers behind your business. And I think this video, well, obviously timely in the sense that I finally hit $10,000 in sales, but for anyone out there that is considering going full-time as a reseller, you really need to know your numbers like the back of your hand. I know a lot of people out there don't enjoy the process of crunching the numbers. Fortunately, I do. I'm a really sort of analytical, statistic sort of a person. I do like to dive into the numbers. And I genuinely think that helps me with the progress of the business that I've got here. So I've got my numbers here today. Like I said at the start of the video, this is my case study. This is me ticking over $10,000 for the first time. I will say before I look at these numbers with you that nothing of this is exactly how everyone else's business is set up. Everyone is completely different. The cost of goods for you might be more, it might be less. These are just purely my numbers to give you an idea, roughly speaking. But what I will say as well is, I'm a pretty typical eBay type of a seller. I average about a $35 to $40 sale price. And that's typically across most eBay stores, sort of an average. So it really just more so comes down to the cost of goods that you're purchasing your items for that will fluctuate your profits. But I thought I would just mention that. Don't take this for absolute gospel. This is just purely an example of the numbers for a $10,000 a month sale. 
So the first thing that we're gonna have a look at is the revenue. All of the money that came into the business for the month of October, if we pull the table up, 253 items sold, resulting in a $10,371 revenue total. The average sale price is $40.99, which is definitely a little bit higher than normal. The cost of goods that went on to sell, so the items that actually sold, I bought those initially for $1,643, and my profit margin is 49%, which is taking out the fees, the postage, and the cost of good reduction. So we're gonna dive into that now, 10,371, that's how it came about, all of the money coming in, but let's have a look at some of the fees. Now the two main fees are eBay and postage, and if we pull the table up, $1,552 was my eBay fee bill. Now that's about 15% of my total revenue, which is pretty standard for me on a monthly basis. So I can always sort of account for 15% reduction for fees, and then my postage was $2,139. Now that total equals $3,691, so it's a good 37% in fees and postage off my total revenue that I've got to deduct straight away. It's quite a large percentage and definitely something to be aware of. So the other thing that we need to look at as well is inventory. Now, inventory refers to what you're actually putting back into the business. What are you having to spend money on for inventory for items to resell back onto eBay? If we pull that up, 267 items were purchased this month to list up and sell, and that expense was $1,513. So Average cost, $5.67, that's pretty good. I'm buying a lot of the time from flea markets that you're seeing in my videos, my op shops, etc. It worked out to a very low cost per unit, which I was pretty happy to see. Um, that might be different, and that's to the point that I was making initially. That figure, that cost of good, might be very different for you with, the, uh, the, I guess, the, the setup for your business model. Um, but definitely a huge figure to definitely be aware of as well. So that's a really quick snapshot of the money in and then the money out. We do need to look at all of those reductions to work out what is actually left over. What is the positive cash flow that you can deem to be a paycheck for yourself as an eBay seller? If we pull that table up, you'll see that we're working off the 10,300. We've got the cost of goods of $1,643. We've got the fees accumulative there of $3,691. And then the other thing that we need to talk about is GST. As an eBay seller, if you're basically getting to the point where you're earning $75,000 in total revenue, you will need to be registered and paying a 10% GST charge. Now, for me, while I'm not quite yet at GST level, I know that this financial year that we are currently in, I will be needing to register and I will be needing to pay GST for the earnings of this year. I'm forecast to do about $110,000 for this financial year. So therefore, at any point in time over the next few weeks, I need to be registering, paying and saving for GST charges. So 10% of the overall revenue for the month of October means that I need to put aside $1,037 for GST for this month alone. A huge figure at 10%. Paycheck. When you pull all of that out, GST included, you're left with 3,998 bucks, basically $4,000. So you started with 10,000 and all you've got left is 4,000. 60% has been cut out. Now you've got the tax there. Now I'll do a tax calculator on the internet to work out how much I should be saving for tax time. And that for this month is $585. You could do a little bit more than that. You could do a little bit less, but for me about 15 to 20% is typically what I like to put away for, for tax time purposes. So I'm left with a take home paycheck there of $3,413. So guys, when you're starting with a $10,000 revenue and you're bringing it down to basically in your hand of $3,500, I think a lot of people out there if you're beginning or if you're part-time reselling you're probably not quite aware of how much is actually needing to be taken out so for me at four thousand dollars a month you do that over the course of a year I'm sitting on about forty eight thousand dollars from an eBay earnings potential so what do you earn as an eBay seller well for me forty eight thousand dollars a year and I'm a full-time seller putting a lot of hours into it you really got to be passionate about it because you aren't making a huge return even with a hundred and twenty thousand dollar a year six-figure eBay store. It might sound great, but you're actually only taking home about 48,000. In my case scenario, I do need to stress this is just my case scenario. Those numbers will definitely fluctuate for you out there. But I think it's a really important thing to look at and be aware of that if you are aspiring to quit your job, jump into something like selling on eBay, you do need to be aware that you need to be really selling a quite a high volume and quite a high number of revenue 
to be able to take home a paycheck that's going to help you continue on living on a, on a week to week, a month to month basis. Um, fortunately, I do have the benefit as well of YouTube and that is bringing in about 20% of that figure of $4,000. So I'm getting about $800 to $1,000 a month coming in with YouTube ad revenue through doing these sorts of videos every single week. And I knew that right from the very beginning that I would need to have multiple uh, streams of revenue to be able to sustain a full-time income because these sales at any point in time on eBay could slip away. So I always like to have a safety net of some other form of income. And right now that's certainly being supplied through the YouTube channel. So. That's really a big quick snapshot for me and um, I really wanted to hopefully put that into context for you today to give you some awareness of some goals and some levels and, and some figures that you kind of need to be trying to hit and it sort of grows slowly towards before you can kind of make that big leap to being a full-time reseller. Let me know in the comments below, do you want to be a full-time reseller? Is that a goal for you? Do these numbers scare you? Do they motivate you? Do you think they're easy to achieve based on where you're sitting at right now? And what are some of the things that you think you're battling with before you can actually make the leap to becoming a full-time reseller if that is your goal? I'd love to get the conversation started in the comments below. Really do appreciate you being here and sifting through all these numbers. If you're still here now and you haven't got a headache, um, I do appreciate you tuning in. It is certainly great to have you here. Look forward to the next episode, Trip to the Thrift on Thursday. Should be a fun one, a little bit more lighthearted. We'll see you soon.